for the following hyperbola, find the center, the vertices, the foci, and the asymptotes. Our equation is given by 4x squared minus 16x minus y squared plus 6y minus 9 equals 0. All right, so the first thing we want to do, put our equation into standard form. To do that, we first have to figure out what direction the transverse axis goes in. If we look at our equation, we have a minus sign on the y squared, so that means the bowls are going to go like this, so our transverse axis is the x-axis. That means our standard equation is going to have the form x minus x zero squared over a squared minus y minus y zero squared over b squared equals one. Now, once I have that, we could start picking off items from our list. The center is going to be x zero y zero, so that would be this point if we were looking at a hyperbola transverse along the x-axis. Then for the vertices, we're going to take the center, we're going to take a, and then we're just going to add plus minus a to the x value of our center. So that will give us these points here and here. Then for the foci, we're going to need to solve for value c. c squared equals a squared plus b squared. Okay, a, b, and c are all positive numbers. Once I have c, same idea, I take the center, and then I add plus minus c to the x value. That'll give us points here and here. Okay, asymptotes we'll save for the end. To put our equation in the standard form, I'm gonna complete the square twice. So what are we gonna do? First, we'll put all the x terms together, we'll put all the y terms together, and then we'll apply our completing the square formula to each of those. Completing the square formula, it's just going to be right here, x squared plus 2ax equals x plus a squared minus a squared. The way you get this, just remember you take x plus a, square it, expand, so that's going to give me x squared plus 2ax plus a squared, move the a squared to the other side. So all we need to do is identify the 2a that goes before the x. So for our x terms, I'll factor the 4 out, it gives me x squared minus 4x, 2a is equal to minus 4, so that gives me a equal to minus 2. Go to the equation, that's going to give me x minus 2 squared minus minus 2 squared, which is a 4, so I have minus 4. Note, this is always going to be a minus sign, whatever I put in for a gets squared, so it becomes positive, and then we hit it with a minus. Push the 4 through, and that's going to give me my x terms rewritten in a more useful form. Next, we go to the y terms. Here, we'll start by factoring out a minus sign. Then, we note here, the 2a that goes with the y is just going to be minus 6, so a is equal to minus 3. Put it into the formula, that gives me y minus 3 squared minus minus 3 squared, which is a minus 9. All right, you push your minus sign through. So since I have parentheses here, make sure you get your plus on the second term. Okay, that's completing the square. Now I could take our two expressions, put them into our formula, and then collapse. So here it's just algebra. So what'll happen is the nines go away, I move the 16 to the other side, and then divide both sides by 16. Now we have the equation in standard form, we can go through our list of items. First, we note the center is going to be at 2 comma 3, so that's the point right there. Once I have the center, I can get the vertices. So we'll note I have a squared equal to 4, b squared equal to 16, so a is 2, b is equal to 4. We can get c squared, that's going to be 20, that's a squared plus b squared, so c is equal to square root of 20 or 2 square root of 5. Okay, vertices. We're going to take the center and subtract our a, which is 2, from the x value. That'll give us the points 0 comma 3 and 4 comma 3. On the graph, they're going to show up here and here. Okay, foci. We're going to take our center again, and now on the x value, we're going to add and subtract our c, which is 2 squared of 5. 
So that gives me foci at 2 plus minus 2 squared of 5, comma 3. These points are going to be here and here. All right. So what's the interpretation of the foci? That means if I take any point on the hyperbola, say here, I take the distance from our point to the foci, distance from the other foci to our point, we take their difference, that's always gonna be a constant value. Okay, so it's not so easy to write this down with some string tack down to your vertices like you would with the ellipse. Okay, that's the first set of items. What's left? The asymptotes. How do you get the asymptotes? Well, remember, what we do here is we mark off the rectangle given by going out by A and B in the X and Y directions. Once I have that, I can just connect the dots from the center to the corners. Then we have the picture of our asymptotes, and then we can go to the equations. So let's take a look. So I'm at my center. I'm going to go over 2, and then we're going to go up 4. So that's going to carve out a rectangle. So I go back 2, up 4, back 2, down 4, over 2, down 4. That's a rectangle. The asymptotes are just given by connecting the corners. All right, we've got two lines, so what do we do? We know a point that's gonna be the center, which is at two comma three. So I have y minus three equals, okay, our slopes times x minus two. How do you get the slope? Well, that's gonna be b over a. If you take a look at the rectangle, the rise is gonna be our b, which is four. The run is gonna be our a, which is two. So our slopes are gonna be plus minus two. And then that gives us our asymptotes.